Hello and welcome to Console Cowboys. So first off, I'd like to thank everybody who's been sharing out the content, liking, subscribing, and all of that stuff. It really helps the channel. In this little mini-series, we're going to take a look at network programming on the blockchain using ethers.js instead of web3.js, which is what we were using before in some of the hacking tutorials or the coding tutorials. But we're going to take a step back first and quickly look at how blocks function, how mining functions, how the security of the blockchain is based on how it chains all together. So that way you have a base understanding as we're moving into doing a bit of coding. I think that will help people out that don't have a background in this. So that's what this first video will be. So if you're not interested in that, then skip it and go to the next one where we get into some more coding. We'll also sprinkle some more of this throughout this little mini series for people to get a little better understanding of security concepts with networking on the blockchain. So you always hear the term blockchain, but what does that actually mean? So we're gonna take a look at blocks and coding to get the info, but first let's take a look at how blocks actually function. So on the screen, I'm at blockchaindemo.org. Feel free to go there and play around with all of these demos. And I'll also link below some videos that go over all of this in much more detail if you're interested, because there's no need for me to reinvent the wheel. So on the screen, we have block one, block two, block three, and block four. And they call it a blockchain because each of these blocks are chained together. How are they chained together? They're chained together by the hashes. So we have the first hash right here, which then change into the previous hash in block two. The hash from block two goes to the previous hash in block three and so on and so forth. So why does this matter? Well, if you break something, for example, if I go in block two and I start typing, it breaks block two because that hash is no longer the same anymore. We change values in it and it breaks every block after that. And that's kind of what protects transactions. If we were to say, hey, I want to double spend attack and go back in time and change a transaction so I can use my Bitcoin over again, we would have to remine every single block after the block that we changed, which is why it's the security of the network, the electricity, the proof of work, all of that effort has to go into remining all of those blocks to catch up and bypass the current chain, right? So some people might not even know what a hash is. So let's take a look at that really quickly. So a hash really is just no matter what we type in here, you're always gonna get the exact same length, but one slight change, a hash of that changes every single value, right? So within the blockchain, what they're doing is they're taking all of the data and they're hashing it all together to get a value. And you'll see right here, the difficulty level here is three leading zeros. So they wanna find a hash that has three leading zeros. You'll notice three right here. Now, if we were to go back to this hash, we start typing things in, no zeros, oh, there's one zero, no zeros, no zeros, no zeros, no zeros, right? So changing these values, this is that hard problem that all of the miners are trying to solve, whatever the current difficulty level is. And I believe it's they adjust the difficulty level every two weeks on the Bitcoin network. And the blocks are about 10 minutes long. So if blocks start taking longer, then they'll dial down the difficulty level. If the blocks are coming in very, very short, they'll increase the difficulty level based on the amount of hashing power on the network. Hopefully that makes sense. So there are some interesting things with this, right? So what they're doing is they're trying to guess this nounce value with whatever data is it within here. And when they find a nounce value with the data that gives us the difficulty level, then the miner is able to put that block on the blockchain, right? So if you break something here, now what we have to do is mine all of those blocks. Our current nounce here is 7967 with this data does not give us a hash that meets the difficulty requirements, right? Our current hash is B1D, it needs three leading zeros. So if we hit mining, now we got those, but it didn't fix the blocks after that because those don't meet up with this previous hash, right? This previous hash no longer matches the hash from the previous block. And that is how they're chained together. So we'd have to mine this one and then this one. And as the difficulty level increases, it takes longer to do it. 
So if we were to break this again and try to remine it at say five leading zeros, it's gonna take quite a bit longer because it's harder to find a nounce value combined with the data that provides enough of those leading zeros. So if we hit mine here, it's gonna take quite a while. So it's gonna spin. I'm probably just gonna fast forward this video and we'll get started in a second. So here we are in the future, literally about five minutes it took to find that hash that actually met the requirements of a nounce value with the data that gave us five leading zeros here. Now you'll notice it didn't invalidate this block, but it actually did. I just accidentally hit start mining and screwed it up for you guys. But the point is that to find this five zeros in the beginning versus this three zeros is a difference between about five minutes and a few seconds. So if I was to say start mining on this three zeros here, very, very quick, but this one actually took me about five minutes. So now the fact that this hash here in the first block is the previous hash in the second block and this hash in the second block is the previous hash in the third block is what secures the network because if we break anything within that chain, we now have to remine everything in the block in order to bring it back to the state that it needs to be in, which means we have to be faster than the original network to do anything nefarious. And at that point, we've spent so much money in hashing power, electricity, that it's not really worth it. So that's what they mean when they say that the proof of work secures the network. Hopefully that brings to light a lot of the concepts and things you've heard in the past about mining, securing the network, using hashes, difficulty levels, and now we can get into some programming with ethers.js and we'll see how we can do some of the things we were doing with web3.js with ethers, but I feel like it's a little easier sometimes with ethers, at least the syntax. So let's hop into that now and I'm gonna open up a VM and we're gonna install ethers and then get rolling with that and start pulling back some blocks and some block info and taking a look a little deeper at those.